Hello everyone and welcome to another Deck Tech brought to you by the Trinosphere. I am Adam the Johnny from the Trinosphere and this week we are taking a look at a Niv-Mizzet the Firemind deck. So before we even get into it, uh, the idea behind this deck was to buy the Is It Guild Kit from the new Ravnica set. Um, and take every single card that's in that, singleton-wise, use that in an EDH deck, and then add, on a budget, cards to make it a fully-fledged EDH deck. So in this case, I used Niv-Mizzet from that deck, and I built an EDH deck using every card from the guild kit, and then on the budget of $1 or less per card... I added all the cards that I needed to to make a deck. So with that, uh, let's get into the deck deck. So here is our deck. And let's take a look at Niv-Mizzet first. So Niv-Mizzet is 2 blue-blue, red-red for a 4-4 dragon wizard with flying. Uh, whenever you draw a card, Niv-Mizzet, the fire mine, deals 1 damage to any one target. And you can tap him to draw a card. So, the way that I broke this down for us to look at is we're going to take a look at the cards that were in the pre-con first. So these are cards that I had to use as part of this. Uh, and then we'll kind of look at some of the themes that were in that and how we moved from that. So uh, we have Beacon Bolt, Cerebral Vortex, Char, Chemister's Insight, Crackling Drake, Direct Current, Gin Illuminatus, Electricery, Electrolyze, Electrostatic Field, Erratic Cyclops, Fire Mines Research, Gelectrode, Goblin Electromancer, Goblin Rally, which this one sticks out to me as one that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, uh, but we'll, we'll get into where the deck actually wants to go. Uh, Gutter Snipe, Hypersonic Dragon, Invoke the Fire Mind, Is It Boiler Works? Is it Charm? Is it Guildgate? Is it Signet? Mizium Mortars, Nivix Guild, Guild Mage, Pyromantics, Quasi Duplicate, Radical Idea, Shattering Spree, Stitch in Time, Thunderheads, Tibur and Lumia, Turn Burn, and We Dragonauts. So, what I got after I looked at those was a couple of centralized themes so it, it seems like it can go in a couple different directions but since we had to use all the cards from the pre-con for this challenge um you know i i kind of tried to embrace the strongest ones so there's a strong draw theme okay uh we want to be drawing cards uh in addition to that we also want to be casting spells more so than creatures and the creatures that we do have care about spells like crackling drake uh cares about having spells in your graveyard and or exile we have gelectrode which wants us to cast instant or sorcery spells in order to untap it goblin electromancer decreases the casting cost of them so everything is kind of spell centered um i think that the the best win cons in the deck as it was are things like Gutter Snipe and Electrostatic Field, which deal damage to each of your opponents for every time that you cast an Instant or Sorcery, uh, combined with some explosive things like We Dragonauts or Erratic Cyclops that get bigger for you casting Instant or Sorceries. So I kind of tried to go with that theme of casting lots of instant or sorceries, getting benefits from that, and most of my instant or sorceries, I went with draw, uh, or something that that had draw tacked onto it, because Niv-Mizzet then deals an extra damage to something for every card that you draw. So uh, that was that was kind of the direction that I went in. So. Um, Here's our draw package uh, that have other effects too, and you'll see why a little bit later for some of these. So, uh, Accelerate gives a creature haste, and you draw a card off of it. So, basically replaces itself. Blighted Cataract draws two cards. Brainstorm draws three cards. So, three triggers off of Niv-Mizzet 
only one mana. Also triggers some of your other things like Electrostatic Field and Goblin um, Electromancer. They're not Electromancer. I'm sorry. Gutter Snipe. Um, Cerulean Wisps. Again, this is just because it draws. Yes, it untaps a creature. So if you tap Niv Mizzet to draw a card, cast this, you can untap Niv Mizzet and draw another card. Uh, Chaotic Strike is a weird one. It can potentially give a creature plus one, plus one if you win the coin flip, but it's really just for drawing the card. Crimson Wisps, again, haste plus draw a card. And then we have some of the cycle lands, Desert of the Fervent, Desert of the Mindful, Desolate Lighthouse, which allows us to draw and discard. Expedites another haste plus draw a card. Forgotten Cave for the cycling. Kefnet, surprisingly low price, only 79 cents on this card. Uh, and allows you to freely draw if you have enough mana. Uh, Leap allows you to fly over things with a ground creature, so if you have something like your Erratic Cyclops that has Trample, but you want it to be in the air, uh, a Leap can help with that, plus it draws you a card. Lonely Sandbar Cycles. Uh, we're going to skip over Mana Geyser because that's not supposed to be in this category. Uh, open into Wonder, so if we do get some some uh, creatures that we know are going to get through. This will allow us to potentially draw quite a few cards. Um, it also makes them unblockable, so we, we can guarantee that they're going to get through unless somebody has some kind of instant speed board wipe uh, or spot removal. Pull from Tomorrow, another just good X spell for drawing lots of cards. Uh, with Niv Mizzet out, this basically deals X damage also, so that's great. Uh, and then another two cycling lands. So. Let's look at uh, another card that I put in here that doesn't really fit into any of the categories other than it's a sorcery uh, is a pyroclasm type effect. So it does two damage to each creature and each player, but you can cast it by just removing a red card from your hand. So if you want to cast an instant or sorcery or people think that you're all tapped out and you're not going to be able to cast an instant or sorcery, Cave-In is in there so that you can cast an extra one to get a little bit of extra buff on some of your creatures, um, like your Weed Dragonauts and things like that. Then we have 12 Islands and 13 Mountains. I think especially in budget builds, people fill their decks with too many tap lands. We have a lot of the cycling lands in here, but my intention is to really use those for cycling so that we have extra draws. Um, but I think for your mana base itself, it should be primarily basic lands. Uh, in a two-color deck, you're not going to get hurt very much with just playing a whole lot of basics. All right, so now we're going to get into a category I'm calling Team Buff. So these are cards that will buff your entire team uh, based on some of the cards that we spoke about in the draw. So Mirrorwing Dragon. Whenever a player casts an instant or sorcery spell that targets only Mirrorwing Dragon, that player copies the spell for each other creature he or she controls, that spell could target. So if an opponent casts something trying to kill Mirrorwing Dragon, it's going to potentially blow out their entire board also. They're unlikely to do that. If I cast something, like for example giving Mirrorwing Dragon haste, I'm going to copy that for all my other creatures and give all my other creatures haste. Now let's talk about how that actually works out. Let's say that I give them flying with leap. So I cast leap on mirror wing dragon. Well, it already has flying, so that's not super helpful to it, but it copies it for all my other creatures. So all of my creatures now have flying and it copied the spell. So because all of my instants and sorceries that target creatures have draw a card, as another line on them. That allows me to, if I have five creatures out, I get five copies of this, they're all flying, and I draw five cards. So it turns all these very low casting cost spells into potentially a lot of draws. Precursor Golem uh, gives you a similar effect. It allows you to copy it for each Golem that you have, and it comes into play giving you two additional Golems. So each one of those at least turns into three copies instead of or two copies in the original spell. So you're at least going to be drawing three cards. Zada Hedron Collider, or er, Grinder, sorry. Uh, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell that targets only it, 
copy it for each other creature you control. Uh, so same thing. You're going to basically get the same buff that you would out of Mirror Wing Dragon. So you can give your whole team haste plus draw, you know, four or five cards is the idea here. So that's kind of the, the cute little synergy that I put in here is to have these so that all of those really low casting cost spells I could keep at a pretty low casting cost so that when I get one of these out, either a Zada or a Mirror Wing Dragon or a Precursor Golem, I can potentially cast one, draw three cards, probably draw into another one, cast that, draw another three cards, four cards, whatever, uh, and just kind of keep that cycle going. Again, if you have a Niv-Mizzet out, that just equates to damage. So works out really well. In addition to Niv-Mizzet being able to do that, we also put in Psychosis Crawler. So Psychosis Crawler's power and toughness is equal to your hand size. But in addition to that, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So this is kind of an incremental l killing them effect. If you've got a Goblin Elect... Or, I'm sorry, a Gutter Snipe out plus a Psychosis Crawler, plus a Niv-Mizzet, and yeah, that's a lot to have out, and then you can stick a, a Zada and draw a ton of cards and cast a whole bunch of one-drop spells, you're probably going to be able to do like 20 damage in a turn fairly easily, okay? So that's the overall idea of how the deck is going to work. Uh, from there, we're going to move past the combo for a second, and we're going to look at other things that get buffed by the instance and sorceries. So similar to We Dragonauts, uh, we put in things like Charmbreaker Devils, which allows us to recur some instance and sorceries, as well as it just gets much bigger, uh, especially if we're give, giving this flying with leap or something along those lines. Um, this can do a lot of serious damage, but also gets us some of those little one-drop spells back so that we can draw more cards and recycle. Uh, Enigma Drake ends up act, acting like another Crackling Drake, uh, which is very good. Firebrand Archer somewhat acts as another uh, electrostatic field. So we're just getting additional incremental value off of all these little instants and sorceries. Murmuring Mystic allows us to make 1-1 one, one flyers when we cast every instant or sorcery. So we want to put a few things down that get benefits off these instants and sorceries first. And then start casting them, drawing more cards, getting more deeper into our deck, and getting all these little tiny advantages. We've got some one ones for blockers, we've got some damage going around, hitting creatures, hitting players, uh, and hopefully controlling the board to enough of an extent that we can win. Uh, Niblets of Frost, same thing, getting an advantage off that, allowing us to freeze creatures, you know, tap so that they don't untap. Spellblade Jin allowing us to pump our entire team. You know, so not just pumping itself, like a prowess trigger or something, but it's actually pumping the entire team. Spellheart Chimera, another very similar thing to Enigma Drake or Crackling Drake. And Talrand doing uh, a better job, in my opinion, of what Murmuring Mystic does, giving us two two flyers for every instant or sorcery that we, that we cast. And then we have some ramp and again on a budget you know it was uh not easy to put in really good ramp but surprising some of the things that we could afford uh especially with some of our x spells like pull from tomorrow and open into wonder uh, i put mana geyser in here we're easily going to be able to get you know probably 10 mana off of a mana geyser mana geyser is surprisingly cheap because it was reprinted at a common um in what is that? A conspiracy? I don't know. Supplemental set of some kind. So it's only 22 cents. Uh, really great card. Very good in combos. But we're not even using it in a combo capacity here. It's just a good sorcery-based ramp. Uh, on other sorcery-based ramp, we have Seething Song. So just turns three mana into five mana. Uh, you know, allows us to get all the triggers off of casting this instant. Or I'm sorry, this sorcery. Oh, it is an instant. Look at that. Look how good that is. Uh, off of this instant, and then it triggers all of our things so that we can do more with it, and we have more mana added to our pool. Again, works very well with those X spells. Uh, we have High Tide, which doubles our blue mana capacity because most of our lands are going to be islands. Most of our blue lands are going to be islands. Then we have 
Commander Sphere draws us a card. Very good. Also adds either color of our mana. Is it Locket? Not the greatest, but it's cheap, so it works in the budget. It can draw us cards late game if we need it to, and it makes both of our colors. Mind Stone, a great, great ramp card, one of my favorites. Draws us a card and makes colorless mana. And Prismatic Lens, again, it's a two drop. It makes colorless mana. You can also force it into making other colors. Um, and we have some ramp already uh, with the Is It Signet in the pre-con itself. Uh, as you can see, the Jace's Ingenuity ended up over here, but it's actually supposed to be in the draw. Uh, it just allows us to draw three cards for five. Cards always good. It's very cheap. Um, and then we have, for our last bit, two combo pieces. So if you're not familiar with Niv-Mizzet, if you put an enchantment called Curiosity on it, Okay. Niv Mizzet taps to draw a card. When you draw a card, you deal one damage to any target. Let's say we target a player. Okay. When the enchanted creature deals damage to an opponent, you may draw a card. So we draw a card after having dealt that damage to our opponent, which allows us to trigger Niv Mizzet again, dealing another damage to that opponent, which allows us to trigger Niv Mizzet again over and over and over and over. And you have an infinite loop of being able to kill all of your opponents. Uh, the other side of that, or the other half of that, would be Ophidian Eye. Um, it's the exact same effect as Curiosity. It costs three because it does have flash. So we can do this one at instant speed. Allows us a little bit more safety if, uh, if there's a lot of control going on. We might be able to sneak this in there at a time that people are tapped out. Uh, whereas Curiosity, you kind of have to wait a full turn cycle in order to do it, um, you know, before you can potentially get this out there. So it's, you know, both need to be in there, uh, and that's our really only combo win. So niv Mizzet itself is a win con with those two. However, we don't want to lean completely on those, and I really wanted to go kind of with a whole bunch of spell matters in general. Uh, notice that if we break this down by actual type of card, you're going to see a little bit different breakdown than you usually see. As you can see, 21 instants and 11 sorceries. So that's 32 total instant and sorceries and only 24 creatures. So 24 creatures, not too bad because we do want to have a creature presence. Um, because our curve is fairly low, I only went with 35 lands. Uh, this did work out just fine in play testing. Uh, it's a, it's a little on the low side. Uh, you could add some more ramp in here, but you would want to take out, um, you'd want to take out instants and sorceries. And honestly, if we were able to take out things from, the pre-con, I'd probably consider taking out things like Firemind's Research. I don't think the card is very strong. Um, I'd probably take out Thunderheads. I really don't think that card's strong at all. You know, there, there's a few things that you could take out of here. Uh, I'd probably put in a Blasphemous Act instead of the Mizium Mortars. Things like that. Um, but on a pretty strict budget, I mean... If we look at the total price of this, it says that the whole deck is $21. Uh, yeah, you know, oftentimes that's leaving a few cards out, but none of those cards are particularly expensive either. Sh Shattering Spree would be the most expensive one in Stitch in Time, but those come in the pre-con. So if you spend the money on the pre-con and then you make, you know, probably about $20 worth of upgrades to it, you can have a deck that functions very well. Uh, the combo pieces that go along with Niv-Mizzet are fairly inexpensive. All of those creatures, you know, Talrand and things like that, that trigger off of instants and sorceries are fairly inexpensive as well. Uh, this was a really fun deck to play around with. It doesn't go super combo-y or, or super esoteric like a lot of Johnny decks do, but uh, it does a lot of really fun and interesting interactions and has a lot of cool synergies in it that I think uh, you know kind of speaks for itself. I would try this out if you like Is It 
and you like spells matter decks and you're working on a budget this is a perfect one for you to build go out and pick up that guild kit throw twenty dollars at it after that you've got yourself a deck and it's fantastic all right so until next time make sure that you share like and subscribe especially if you want to see more of these uh, let us know if you like these budget builds uh, more so than just regular free-for-all builds and uh, what you want to see. You can check me out on Twitter at Squire9999 or at the Trinosphere. And again, I am Johnny or Adam from the Trinosphere. And until next time, keep brewing, my friends.